Hello and welcome back to my channel. Now here in the UK we're under lockdown so we can only go out for food uh, like a lot of people I'm sure who are watching. So I found inspiration kind of hard to come by. So I got thinking what used to motivate me and inspire me to go out and shoot and one of the main things is photography documentaries. And I've watched quite a few in the past which some of which will be appearing in my top 10 but I really wanted to expand my repertoire of what I've seen. And so a few videos ago I reached out to you guys to recommend me some and you did not disappoint. You recommended loads most of them were actually incredible. I watched every single one which was recommended to me and most of them are appearing in my top 10, my newly formed top 10. And don't worry, I won't be giving away any key moments or spoilers. So if you do wanna go after this video, hopefully uh, go out and check some of them out. None of them will be spoiled. So let's get started. Number 10, Manufactured Landscape. Manufactured Landscape is a 2006 feature film directed by Jennifer Bakewell, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, all about the incredible work of Edward Bernsky. The reason this moved my top 10 is because it gives a glimpse into the behind the scenes of the landscapes Bernsky has captured over the years. For me the documentary is actually a little bit lacking in that the commentary is very sparse, I prefer a lot more commentary when it comes to documentaries, and there's a lot of long drawn out shots. And when I say this I don't mean like a few minutes long, the opening shot is the camera slowly moving across the factory floor, it's for 8 whole minutes, and I actually <laughs> I timed it. And it's very cinematic, it is a beautiful shot and I completely get why people would love it. But for me, it's just a bit too much. There's no commentary to go along with it. Like I thought I accidentally hit a slow-mo on my remote. It, it was just a bit too much. But the reason it's made my top 10 is because I just love his work. I love his relationship with landscapes and I love the vastness of it. So that's why it's in my top 10 because I love his work. Number nine is In No Great Hurry, 13 Lessons in Life with Soul Lighter. This is a really fascinating and revealing documentary about a photographer who's considered to be quite reserved and it's made even more poignant that this was shot just before he died in 2013 and he's actually one of my favourite colour photographers alongside William Eggleston and although actually saying that I actually came across his work in painting forms he used to paint over his uh, photographs quite a lot which I saw at the photographer's gallery a few years ago but yeah I love his colour work. The director Leach contacted Lighter after seeing his work in his book Early Colour he then met with him in New York a year later and spent a year persuading the photographer that there needed to be a film about him. The filming took place over 2010 and 2011 and the film was edited in 2012. Luckily, Leiter got to see an edit of the film just before he died. Saul was a very private and modest man and this definitely comes across in the documentary. He can also be quite tentative and slow when it comes to talking about his work and explaining himself, which in turn kind of makes a documentary at points feel a bit slow. But that's just the kind of man he is and this documentary kind of lends itself to him. So overall, really like this one. Number eight is Daido Moriyama, Near Equal. Daido Moriyama is a iconic street photographer and despite loving street photography and his work, I knew next to nothing about him, which is why I think I love this documentary so much. He captures really gritty black and white images that present a very distinct perspective of Tokyo. If you're feeling stuck in a rut, especially after all this is over and you can go outside, definitely watch this to get your street photography mojo back. He also discusses in great detail his approach to street photography and he's actually quite funny with this, he's got a very good sense of humour and he even talks about how he tries to take photos without people noticing. The film is also filled with interviews from people other than Moriyama including writers, editors and curators who have all worked with him. As much as I love his strong punchy black and white images, the reason I love this documentary is just because you get to know his personality and there's a particular anecdote which is a favourite of mine where he discusses starting a project in Shinjuku but he just ended up getting drunk for like a year and I love Japan, it's my happy place, I went a few years ago and I can completely relate to so many of the stories he tells even though he was photographing them a few years ago or you know decades ago in some cases you can still see it when you're on the streets of Japan and yeah, I'm actually, along that note, writing a book on Japan. It's not a photo book, it will be more of like a short novel in sort of a zine format. But if you would be interested in maybe buying a copy and reading it, please comment down below. Because depending on how many people are interested will be whether I do a print on demand service or a limited run. So yeah, please let me know down below. Number seven is Annie Leibovitz. I'm a big fan of Annie's life but I didn't really know a lot about her but if you do you probably won't find this documentary that interesting because I don't think it kind of uncovers anything big but for me as I didn't know anything I found it very interesting. She's still quite guarded when it comes to her private life which is of course fair enough but she does open up and discuss her approach to shooting and her thoughts behind some of her most famous shoots. Although she is yes very outspoken and established in the industry she has taken some of the most iconic images. 
If you have one critique of this film, it's on my DVD, there's loads of extras and included on there are some interviews which weren't included and I really think they should have been. I think they are more integral and important to her story and her arc. It kind of reminds me of Game Changers which is a documentary on Netflix, not about photography admittedly, but there's loads of extra scenes and interviews which weren't included which I think should have been, but apart from that, that's it. Number six is Bill Cunningham, New York. This video which is in this video, which is available in its entirety on YouTube, captures one of the first street style photographers in New York. This documentary includes loads of famous figures such as Anna Wintour, Tom Wolfe and Brooke Astor. Bill's body of work is enormous so it would have been impossible to focus on all of it, so they have just uh, focused in the documentary on a few key points. I won't give away what they are but if you watch it you'll see. And as a lover of his work and street photography, I loved in this that you could see how he approaches photographing strangers in the street. It's something I've done before but definitely need to get better at and get more confident at. This is one of those documentaries where you can also, alongside enjoying it, you can also learn from it. Number five, What Remains. This film directed by Stephen Cantor is all about Sally Mann and her provocative controversial work. Director Cantor had actually worked with Sally Mann before in 1994 where he was nominated for an Oscar for a short film he shot on her work. You can tell they have built a repertoire and Mann is very honest and open in front of the camera. She is very honest in her struggles in both her private and public life. As between the time of the first documentary and this one, she had become a very established and controversial artist in America. Number four is McCullen. This film is all about Don McCullen, and last year I saw his work for the first time in person at the Tate Britain. And alongside them just being beautifully brutal images, they were also displayed great, and it was a really extensive collection of his work, which is why I seeked out a documentary all about his life. He captured some of the most iconic images in the 20th century and he was also working at a critical time when it came to global photojournalism and um, witnessing some horrendous stories. This film was made for the cinema and you can really tell this in the production value. He captured some of the most iconic images in the 20th century and witnessed the awful inhumanity to man. Number three is Vivian Meyer. This is an incredibly fascinating story and one what like, it sounds almost made up. And most of you will know Vivian's story, but if you don't, I urge you to look it up and watch the documentary. Due to her death, there are loads of unanswered questions, but that's what makes her so intriguing. I can't even imagine shooting hundreds of rolls of films and never developing them. The minute I shoot the film, I can't wait to develop it and scan. I also have a photo book, which was published after her death. And when it first came out, it was actually very controversial as to who made it, produced it, who curated it, who got the profits from it. But if you take all that away from it, it's just a beautiful collection of images. If you don't think about the story, as a photographer, I think she's one of the best of her time. Number two, Everybody Street. This documentary was made by Cheryl Dunn, who is a well-known street photographer and filmmaker, and it captures and features some of the most iconic street photographers in New York. This includes Bruce Davison, Mary Ellen Mark, Elliot Erwitt, Rick Powell and Jamal Shabazz. Also features Bruce Gilden, but I'm really not a fan of his. I don't like the way he approaches strangers and I don't like the way he often doesn't take no for an answer when it comes to taking their portrait in the street. You can watch the whole thing on YouTube, which I highly recommend you do. It captures the adrenaline and rush of doing street photography in a busy city so well and it just makes you want to get out there and do it. I mean, of course, when this is all over. And finally, number one, which way is the front line from here? This film is a lethal combination. It's made about one of my favourite film photographers, Tim Heverington, combined with one of my favourite filmmakers, Sebastian Younger. It's more a look at the man himself rather than the work he created, but both are great. It features his practical approach to photographing war and the beautiful ways he chose to photograph it, such as his Sleeping Soldiers series. It's a really beautiful, intimate look at a man who lost his life way too early. And I think that's due to the fact that not only are there loads of brilliant footage of his time on the front line, but that it was directed by his close friend Sebastian Younger. And previously they had directed the Oscar nominated Res Repo, another brilliant documentary. Last year I undertook hostile environment training for filmmakers and I'm not planning on doing that anytime soon, but the opportunity arose and so I thought it'd be super interesting to do it. And it was run by a man called James, I won't give away too much more, but James commissions uh, hostile environment films for Channel 4. And the whole thing was really intriguing and I learned an awful lot in a very short amount of time. But for me, one of the most interesting parts of it was when he revealed his child's godfather was actually Tim Heverington. They were very close friends and worked on loads of projects together. And I won't retell really them here because they are personal stories, but he told loads of stories about Tim, which kind of just reiterated what an amazing man he was 
and how down to earth he was and how he really did care about the subjects he photographed. So that is it, my top 10. And as much as I did order them, they're very interchangeable. Some days I fancy watching some of them and not others and vice versa. And remember to comment down below if you'd want to read a book about my time in Japan. I have no idea if you would. Um, but apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next one, which will be a Lomography Fisheye review.